thank you for being here to celebrate this joyous occasion of such exceptional individuals who will be entering the medical field in their chosen profession. I now present to you the graduating class of 2020. and congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we can all just stand for those of you here and at home for a moment of silence to remember the victims of the 9-11 attack that occurred on September 11, 2001. Thank you. You sit down. At this time, I would like to introduce the administrative staff, many, of course, who cannot be here at our normal graduation, but this is something that the CEO of this institution wanted to make sure that you were able to celebrate your graduating class just like any other. Maybe a little bit different, but we're making it happen. But at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. George Rizzuto, Chief Executive Officer of West Boca Medical Center. And the other gentleman who was not able to be here with us tonight, Dr. Carl Rosencrantz, radiologist and medical advisor of the radiology program. I also would like to recognize many individuals, I will not be calling out their names, but these are all directors of radiology departments that allow our students to rotate through their clinical sites where you will be able to get your tremendous hands-on experience. So therefore, we now have 15 clinical sites that our students rotate through. And without these directors allowing us to rotate through their clinical sites where you get that hands-on experience, it would not happen. So to all the directors of the radiology departments out there, thank you for all you do for us. I now will introduce the faculty of the radiology program. First of all, I want to introduce Dr. L.B. Pernsteiner, Clinical Coordinator of the Radiology Program. Not only, not only my right-hand person, but I like to tell the story that LB was one of my students back in 1990 who graduated from a radiology program, became a technologist, practiced in the field, and I think around 16 or 17 years ago, is when I hired her here as my clinical and right-hand person. She's a tremendous asset to this program. <laughs> also, there are many clinical instructors that have been with us for many, many years. Again, these are faculty members from all over, whether it's St. Mary's, Delray Medical Center, West Boca. These are individuals that not only are technologists at their institution, but also give that little extra to help you succeed. So to all the clinical instructors out there, thank you for all you do. You are recognized and appreciated. Before introducing our first speaker, I would like to say a few words 
and the students know I'm not very short on words. I'm usually uh, very expressive, and that's something about me, and I will continue here tonight. I personally would like to thank Mr. George Rizzuto, CEO, and the administrative staff for all the support and commitment to our radiology program over the 33 years that the school has been here. In addition, this school can boast our exceptional pass rate on the national registry given by the American Registry of Radiologic Technology. Currently, our national board pass rate is 99.4% for first-time examinees. You may not be aware, but 10 of the graduates have already taken their ARRT national board's exam and have passed earning their radiologic technologist license. I now would like to acknowledge the following students for their accomplishment. Mrs. Jenny Lopes. Ms. Gabrielle Monteroso. Ms. Kelly Jones. Ms. Rachel Wapner. Mr. Joseph Giacalone. Ms. Alexa Luchak. Ms. Alia Pacheco. Mrs. Kathleen Echezareta. Mr. Christopher Ebersol. And Ms. Gabriela Gudron. Congratulations. Well done. Only nine students remain to take their ART boards, and I knew you would be following the same path as your classmates. Congratulations. Furthermore, the program in January 2016 went through the accreditation process given by the Joint Review Committee on Education and Radiologic Technology. We are very proud and humbled to have received a five-year accreditation. Thanks to the hard work of all the staff, instructors, students, and administrators for this outstanding accomplishment. Our next review will be in 2021, so thank you all. Also, as mentioned earlier, the school has a CT program during the evening hours for registered technologists who do not have CT certification and senior students who would further like to pursue their education in the radiology modalities. Many of these graduates have already signed up for the next CT class that hopefully will begin in October or early November once we start clinical again due to the COVID pandemic. So I know a lot of you have applied to that next CT program. Hang in there, we'll get that started. In addition, we started a mammography program in September of 2018. The first class was completely full with 15 students completing the program. All passed their ART national boards, and many are now working in that modality. We have eight clinical sites that are used for the clinical training. Two of the three instructors are past graduates of our radiology program. They are Meredith Solotov and Christina Trentacosta. Gina Destiny, over at West Boca Diagnostic Imaging Center, is our third instructor. Several past graduates were accepted into the first class and all passed their national board again. Many of the graduates here have already signed up for the next mammography program as well. Hang in there. We will hopefully get that started up again soon. Furthermore, I would like to thank the Medical Executive Committee, chaired by Dr. Stephen Edbrill, Vice Chair of Chief of Staff of West Boca Medical Center, for establishing a total of five scholarships given to the students who meet the criteria which helps pay for part of their tuition. This is the dedication and support given by people who care for the education of these future healthcare workers. This year's recipients were Mr. Joseph Giacalone, Ms. Ms. Alia Pacheco, Ms. Rachel Wapner, Mr. Ernesto Giraldo, and Mr. Aiden Lombardo. Congratulations. At this time, I would like to acknowledge several of our graduates who have gone beyond all that is required of a radiology student. These individuals have given countless hours in raising money and food donation for such causes as the American Heart Association, the March of Dimes, the Breast Cancer, and Boca Helping Hands. These individuals and their classmates, including the junior class, have raised over 1,223 pounds of food this past year for Boca Helping Hands. The school record is 1,523 pounds. Phenomenal. For the American Heart Association alone, they raise over $1,200, and for the March of Dimes, over $1,500. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Katie Meeks, 
Ms. Gabriela Gudron, Mr. Aiden Lombardo, Mr. Ernesto Giraldo, Mr. Corey Villard, and the entire senior class. Well done. Also, I would like to thank Mr. Michael Chester, District Manager for One Blood and the One Blood Company. The students and employees from West Boca Medical Center actively give of their time donating blood, which is severely needed in our community, as well as over the country. Every time you donate, three lives are saved. At this time, we would like to recognize the students who have given so much of their time and blood donation for community and truly have made a difference in someone's life. Several students receive scholarship money for their commitment and continuous donation to a very needy cause. Recipients of the One Blood Award are Ms. Kelly Jones and Mr. Ken Nguyen. Congratulations. At this time, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Mr. George Rizzuto, Chief Executive Officer at West Boca Medical Center. Thanks to George and the administrative team, we also now have a brand new school for the students and faculty, which is in this building here. Also, I would like to congratulate George and the administrative team and all West Boca Medical Center employees and physicians for receiving the 2020 five-star recipient Vaginal Delivery and C-Section Delivery Award for the sixth year in a row. Also, WBMC is the first hospital in Florida to be Joint Commission Perinatal Care Certified and ACR Breast Imaging Center of Excellence and Cribs for Kids National Certified Bronze Safe Sleep Hospital. I can go on and on concerning the outstanding accomplishments at West Boca Medical Center. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Rizzuto. Thank you, Ray. And I'd like to take the next two and a half hours <laughs> to, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I want to congratulate all of you. And for all of those who are streaming in as well, wow, do you guys clean up nicely. <laughs> I've been in this room for some of those events where you were doing fundraising and you were doing potluck. I've seen some of you at the blood drives. I've seen you in the halls in your whites. And you look great. And you represent us well. But wow, you look really great tonight. So uh, you should be happy, and, it's a, and you deserve it. This is your night. And for those who are streaming in, you know, we do apologize that we can't do things normally or as you would expect in a graduation, but that's just the times that we're in. But you know what? I always like to look at the positive side of things, and this may even be better. I don't know who's looking in from your family, your friends, or neighbors, but very possibly there could be more people who care about you who are either joined together or signed on just because of the technology. So uh, I hopefully this will be uh, important to you and meaningful as well. I could say so much, but I just want to sort of limit my, my comments to a couple of things. There's not a whole lot more to add than Ray's wonderful opening comments, but what a day to graduate, a day in our history that was difficult and, and should be uh, remembered, but a time when healthcare workers really came to the aid of their fellow man. So you, even though you weren't there, you are joining a profession that is meaningful and purposeful. And what more fulfilling could it be than to help others? And that's why I'm in this uh, healthcare industry. I feel very privileged to be running this hospital. And on behalf of everyone else in administration, and on behalf of all the administrators at the places that you've rotated, and I've talked to many of them, they extend their congratulations as well. I have to tell you, the only time I hear about any of you, maybe not by name, but as part of the school, it's always that you represented well. And those that precepted you in the modalities that you rotated through also are quite impressed. You hear comments about bright young people, energetic, willing to learn, good questions, make me proud for the future of our industry. So that's a great accomplishment in itself. And also, just other than the book learning, the didactic learning, the rotations, you did, like many people you, who were going through school anywhere, you had to pivot and adapt to sitting apart like you are now, appropriately socially distanced. Ray and I only took our masks off to speak to you because that's permitted. We're going to be taking some pictures, but we'll do it socially distanced. And there's other things you had to do either 
in the hospital in any rotation or be limited from those. And I applaud you for your resilience, for the fact that you did it and you listened to the guidance uh, that came with all the best intentions to keep you safe, to keep our patients safe, to keep your family safe. So uh, again, I applaud you for that. So a lot has changed, right? 2020 is just a year of change. But there are many things that haven't changed. So I'm going to do like Ray and put on my specs so I don't make any mistakes. But I just was so proud when I read this. What hasn't changed is that since its beginning in 1987 and the first graduating class in 1989 where 11 students graduated, there have since been 642 others who have pre who preceded you. The pass rate of 99.2%, I've ran a number of hospitals over my 35 years, including lab schools and radiology schools, and that pass rate is just remarkable. It's a testament to Ray and to LB, and I want to thank them for all that they do. Uh, without their guidance, I don't know that that pass rate would be possible. Again, for those looking in on the WebEx, without your support, none of this would have been possible. And personally, the sacrifices I'm sure all of you have made are a reason for that. The total number of students currently in the radiography program is 40, uh, CT 15, and, and, and MAMO 10. And there's 15 sites, as Ray said, where you've uh, rotated through. And 65% of our graduates stayed within the tenant facilities. That's our parent company, and that's important to us. We don't want you to go to the competitor. We want you to stay here and continue to do great work. Believe it or not, every year, even though there's the, the number of you here, we have 200 to 275 applicants every year. People want to get into this school. They hear about it and its benefits, not only as a great education, but a future for opportunity in the, in, in the work life. The, the Joint Commission accreditation is important, important and the school is a CT program in the evening, as, as Ray said. As Ray and I wrote to all of you uh, at your homes, we told you how proud we were. We asked you to thank your family members, because we know for ourselves we wouldn't be where we are in our careers uh, without their support. And I have heard enough from Ray and LB to know that you're now armed with the tools that you need to really be the best in your profession. Advice from an old man, reach for the heights. Don't stop learning. Don't stop giving. The teamwork that you've already shown each other, wherever you go, be a team player and you'll go further. We can do nothing alone. And lastly, I wish all of you in here and your family members and your friends good health during these challenging times. We will get through it. We are resilient. And I just feel so proud to even be here uh, this evening. So thank you for letting me say a few comments. And I'll be coming on at the end again just to say one or two more final things. So congratulations. You look great. And enjoy this evening. Thank you, George. A lot of people do say that we look alike somehow. <laughs> Same height, the whole bit. And the first time we met, we talked about it. And he said, God, is, are we brothers from another mother or something like that? <laughs> But anyway, thank you again, George, for your speech there. Um, before, before the presentation of the BRACO Awards, I would like to congratulate the present junior class, I know who are watching in tonight, who will be seniors in a couple of weeks. Soon you will be up here accepting your diplomas. Hang in there. There's another group of individuals that sometimes go unrecognized. We at the school appreciate and recognize all their hard work, patience, and knowledge that you share with these students. I personally would like to thank all the dedicated radiologic technologists from all the clinical sites who share in one way or another in the growth and maturity of these future technologists. So to all the technologists out there, thank you all for your support. <laughs> Let's begin with the BRACO Presentation Awards. I want to thank Ms. Rachel Jakowski, BRACO Sales Representative, for obtaining these beautiful awards in recognition for outstanding performance. The first award is the Technologist Recognition Award. This award is given to the technologist that goes beyond the duty of their work in helping these students accelerate in their clinical performance. The technologist is selected by the students themselves. This year, the award goes 
to Mr. Joshua Guevara from West Boca Medical Center. Congratulations, Joshua. I know that you are watching as I send you the link. And Joshua is also one of our past graduates. And also, to commend him even a little bit more, I think it was last year that Joshua also got the Employee of the Year Award at West Boca Medical Center. Congratulations, Joshua. Well done. The next award presented is for outstanding academic performance. This individual graduated with a 4.0 GPA, which includes both academic and clinical. The award for outstanding academic performance goes to Mrs. Jennifer Lopes. Congratulations. Jenny has also been hired at one of our tenant hospitals, and she will be starting pretty soon. Congratulations again. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. The next award is for outstanding clinical performance. This is a very special award. This award is given to a student who excels in their clinical work, has excellent patient care skills, shows compassion for the patient, takes pride in their work, and is a team player. The student is selected by the faculty, technologists, and supervisors of our clinical sites. This year, two students received the same amount of votes for the award. It was that close. The award for outstanding clinical performance goes to Mr. Christopher Ebersole, and Mr. Joseph Giacolone. Congratulations on this special accomplishment, gentlemen. And both of them, both of them have also received offers at tenant institutions. Finally, the Joint Review Committee on Education in Radiologic Technology has established an award to recognize overall excellence in radiology performance. This involves both academic and clinical. In addition, this individual must have the total package when it comes to patient care, commitment, and positive outlook in representing our profession. It is with great honor that I present the JRC ERT Excellence Award to Ms. Rachel Wapner. Congratulations, Rachel. I will now ask Mr. George Rizzuto and L.B. Pernsteiner to please help me present the diplomas and school pin to the graduates. Let's begin with the presentations. First, to start us off, Mrs. Bindel Amin. Congratulations, Mendel. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Lourdes Cadet. Congratulations, Lourdes. Mr. Christopher Ebersole. Congratulations, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Mrs. Kathleen Echazareta. Mr. Joseph Giacolon, Jr. Congratulations, sir. Mr. Ernesto Giraldo. Ladies and gentlemen, nickname Suave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Gabriela Gudron. Ms. Kelly Jones. You can almost hear the clapping at home. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Are you guys clapping at home? Be loud, be loud for us. Congratulations, Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Aiden Lombardo. job, Aiden. Mrs. Jennifer Lopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Alexa Luchak. And I do have to give a little bit of props to Alexa also. Her, her and Jennifer so far have gotten the highest scores on the national boards of the ART. So congratulations to both of you. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Alexandra McPhillips. Alexandra following in her father's footsteps, who was also an MRI technologist in the field of radiology for many years. So congratulations. Miss Katie Meeks. Congratulations, Katie. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Gabrielle Monteroso. Gabrielle moved over from the West Coast of Florida over here just to come to this radiology school and is now going to stay here and work in this area. So congratulations again. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ken Wynn. Congratulations, Ken. Very proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Ms. Aliyah Rogers Pacheco. Great job, Aaliyah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Corey Villard. Congratulations, Corey. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Rachel Wapner. Well done, Rachel. And of course, last but not least, Miss Diana Zuluaga. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2020 graduating class. You may have a seat, thank you. We will now have Mrs. Jennifer Lopes representing the 2020 graduating class say a few words. Thank you, Ray. Good evening, honored guests here and joining us through live stream. It is wonderful to be together to celebrate our accomplishments over the last two years. To my fellow graduates, congratulations on achieving this milestone. We've worked so hard to get to this point today, and it's an honor to be with you. Take a moment to recognize one another and those that have helped us achieve our goal. I know how disappointing it is that due to the pandemic, we were unable to gather for the typical ceremony, but <laughs> I know one person that's really glad we didn't, and that's my husband, so no one will ask to look at his feet. <laughs> yeah. On behalf of our graduating class, I'd like to recognize those who've been instrumental in supporting us through this journey, making our goal of becoming radiologic technologists possible. Since appointment as CEO, George Rizzuto quickly adopted our class, attended each of our events. Thank you for extending your support to our class and program. To our 14, now 15 clinical site directors, we thank you for opening your doors to our program, allowing us to gain experience in the top healthcare facility South Florida has to offer. A special thank you to Dr. Rosencrantz, as well as all of our radiologists who've demonstrated patience, mentorship, excuse me, by permitting us to participate in exams and procedures. Thank you to all the technologists who shared their wealth of experience and knowledge that go beyond the pages of murals to make us better. Our clinical rotations would not have been possible without the guidance of our CIs. Thank you for taking on the additional responsibility of mentoring us, ensuring we learn proper protocol, positioning, and technique while demonstrating superior patient care. I can confidently say, I think we'll hear your voice in our heads throughout our future careers. <laughs> to my fellow classmates, thank you for sharing this wild ride. We shared early morning hallway and late night study sessions, talked each other off the ledge when needed, offered each other valuable insight, and together committed to this rigorous program. During these two years, we've bonded over class and clinical experience, brought out the best in each other, and established a network that will continue to strengthen and grow as professionals. We are also deeply indebted to our family and friends. Thank you for your understanding and support throughout our countless hours of study and homework, for picking up the slack when we were overwhelmed and dropped the ball, for being our positioning dummies, for pretending to be interested in the graphic details of our OR and floral experiences, and for convincing us that we we're okay despite our moments of hypochondria. <laughs> At this point, it's only fitting that we recognize Dr. P for planting the seeds of hypochondria in our heads. <laughs> Your list of classes of, on the curriculum included radiation protection one and two, quality assurance, and pathology. Now some of us, but of course not me, thought this is going to require maximum effort because those are some dry topics and in the afternoon no less. 
To our pleasant surprise, you filled our afternoons with levity and intrigue. You made them memorable with movies and potluck, invited a fascinating guest lecturer, had us tape each other's radiographic facial lines, gave us the platform to discuss and learn about odd pathologies and the leeway to present these topics and attempt to win over our classmates with related quizzes and prizes. Your flair for surprise crossed over to our clinical sites as well. In any given clinical day, we're on our game, tending to patients, earning comps, engaged in procedures, assisting technologists, and restocking supplies. But when you stop in for a visit, it seems to be at the precise moment we're checking our phone that's of course locked away in our bag in the break room, <laughs> or taking the load off sitting on the radiographic table, recreating the radiographic facial lines with tape on our classmates. You gave us the kick in the rump when we needed it and reminded us that someone's always watching, so make a good impression. Dr. P, you also instilled a confidence in us with phrases like, there's nothing to it, and a called well is a called well is a called well, <laughs> reminding us not to overthink it, and yes, we can do it. We're so grateful for your outside the box teaching style, keeping us on our toes and believing in us. It made us better students and will make us great technologists. I've saved the best for last. I've saved the best for last. The hardest working director and man that runs on Duncan, R. Ray Mata. <laughs> we started our journey almost three years ago with a personal interview with you. A few of us were turned down by other programs because we lacked somewhere in the point system or didn't quite make it up to snuff on paper. But you took the time to get to know us, looked beyond any ill-perceived shortcomings, and saw our individual strengths. As with each class preceding ours, you assembled a class that is varied in background, education, level, and age, without a specific mold or prescribed formula that we fit into, but nonetheless, you saw robust with potential. And it's the same attention to detail that you use to navigate our individual paths and assemble our clinical rotations. I can remember back to my first year and discussing with alumni at our clinical rotations, the method behind clinical assignments and how some felt that they cracked your code on who's put where and with whom. And others, myself included, determined we just can't figure it out. Ray just knows what we need and is always right. <laughs> While we may never know what it is you see in us, how you know what we need most, or how you assemble the right clinical fit that works, we know what we've seen in you that has guided us to this moment as your proud graduates. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, you give everything 100%. We witness this with each class lecture, the endless hours you spend behind the scenes for the program, the dedication you have to elevating the profession, and continuous support for local charities. You inspired us to give our all as well. You know, we talk with alumni a lot, and when it came to the discussion of projects like the Fracture Report, Disease Report, everyone warned us to check the box, don't kill yourself. But when it came down to putting the report together, there's no way we could, in good conscience, do anything but give it our all. I know I'm not alone when I say I had these internal fights with myself to just get the job done only to turn around and spend hours downloading the perfect visuals, finding the best resources, and putting together the most attention-grabbing poster board I could muster, all for a check the box. You instilled in each of us to have a pride in all that we do, no matter a bit how big or small the task may seem. Along with pride, you instilled a healthy sense of fear in us as well. <laughs> Much like Dr. P, only different, it kept us on our best behavior and was always balanced with a generous dose of kindness. Some may even call it tough love. Most mornings entering the classroom, we were greeted with a variety of treats left at our desks, including printouts of variable study, valuable study guides and pertinent news, inspirational messages, hand sanitizer, and Hershey Kisses. Now those treats were often followed with our projection and review assignment notebooks, several Northwesterns and mock exams, but the treats really soften the blow. <laughs> the expectations of the program rate are high, but are far exceeded by the results of our boards, experience that we gain, contacts that we make, and promising endeavors awaiting us. Ray, out of all of your qualities, passion is your hallmark. It is what makes the radiologic technology program at West Boca Medical Center so successful. It's what makes you the best instructor. It is why alumni and colleagues say Ray's the best 
when they hear your name. It didn't matter the topic. Your passion for teaching left us hanging on your every word, excited to learn and challenge ourselves, and feeling almost disappointed when class ended semester after semester. I've never known anyone that has possessed so much passion, but I do know we're all left better off having witnessed it. Thank you for enriching not only our professions, but our lives with your passion. You know, initially I thought it was so cool to be graduating in the year 2020, because when you think 2020, you think clarity, visual acuity, sharpness, and how cool is that, especially for radiologic technologists to have that association with the year that we graduate. Oh, how that perspective has changed. The visual now tied to the year 2020 is looking through toilet paper roll lenses at a bunch of, as we clinic, clinically call it, feces. I mean, literally, we ran out of toilet paper. We couldn't get our hair cut or colored, couldn't go to parties, celebrations, restaurants, or movies. We couldn't watch sports, and by we, I mean you and my husband. Good Lord, I have never seen so much of the man. <laughs> we couldn't go to the gym, which had me crankier than a bag of cats, but the only blessing is that we wear scrubs and they hide a lot of COVID calories. And the masks. Up until now, I never realized how much we really rely on seeing someone's entire face to know what they're saying. Our daily lives as students were completely upended. We came cruising into the final semester as seniors, all excited and ready to graduate, to have class and clinicals abruptly put on hold. I'm gonna come through the front door on this one and let you know it was kinda nice to pump the brakes for a little bit. <laughs> but even that got old really quick and was replaced with a whole lot of anxiety on how the heck is Zoom class gonna work? Do I still know how to do a chest X-ray? Are we ever gonna get all of our comps? Is my ARRT application ever going to be processed? Are there going to be any sites near me to take the boards? But truly the hardest part of it all is the heartache of social distancing from family and friends. We've lost the ability to embrace and gather with loved ones, be physically present for those in their time of need, and shake hands and interact with colleagues. I could go on about all that we've lost and endured, but I'd like to leave you with how we've adapted and what we've learned as hindsight is always 2020. So these are some of the takeaways I'd like to leave for my fellow graduates of the class of 2020. Number one, the pandemic forced us to become a resourceful bunch to hunt and find coveted supplies. Like many of you, I had intel within my network of family and friends on which store we stocked toilet paper and shared intel on location of disinfectant wipes. Much like the toilet paper crisis, we'll encounter times in our careers when we need help from our professional network to get a foot in the door or advance to the next level. As we've seen over the last two years, the world of radiology is very intertwined and far-reaching. This network is there for you, so don't be afraid to use it, but don't dare abuse it. Number two, some of us got really creative during the pandemic, coloring and cutting our own hair, thinking, you know what, it's not that bad. And while I applaud you for your ingenuity, some things are best left to the professionals. So going forward in our careers, we should always be resourceful, but know the limits and stay within our scope. And three, masks have totally cramped our style, make us uncomfortable, and add an extra layer of complexity when it comes to communicating. We've been forced to become really active listeners to hear what someone's saying. How cool is that? From day one, Ray has stressed the importance of successful communication in providing excellent patient care, whether it's between coworkers and doctors or patients and their loved ones. Mask or not, Always remember the most basic skill in demonstrating compassion is to be an active listener. Be, absorb be observant and always ask for clarification so the messenger knows they're being heard. And four, COVID-19 forced us all to adapt. I look back to six months ago at the onset of the pandemic and I was so fearful, wasn't sure how I was going to cope, didn't know if or when we would finish school or what the future held. As time went on, we adjusted to wearing masks, learning from home, changing the way we interact socially, and little by little, that fear of the unknown grew into acceptance and adaptation to a new normal. Although not in the traditional sense of any of our alumni, we successfully graduated from the West Focus School of Radiologic Technology during a global pandemic. Think about that. Our class, the class of 2020, may be known for a lot of things, but the one thing that I want you to never forget is our drive resilience, and willingness to adapt, despite the hurdles before us. 
Our futures hold uncertainty and challenges, and I assure you, you're going to need these tools again. But it's with confidence I know that with drive, resilience, and willingness to adapt, there's no obstacle we can't overcome. In closing, I'm left with a profound sense of mixed emotions that our journey together as a class has come to an end. My only solace is the overwhelming sense of pride in our accomplishments and anticipation of the bright future ahead for the driven and resilient class of 2020. Savor this moment, we did it. Congratulations to you all and good luck. That was phenomenal. When I asked you to write the speech, that was really beautiful. And everything I got out of that is, yes, my wife Liddy did cut my hair, and I walked in the next day, and I remember some of the students said, Ray, what happened to your hair? So yeah, leave it to the professionals. You are absolutely correct. Congratulations to all of you again. As we come to an end of our ceremony, I would like to thank the parents, spouses, family members, and friends, all of you that were the driving force behind every single student that was here. I also like to thank Laura Albertini, Director of Volunteer Service and Marketing, for helping us put this together for us. Thank you very much, Laura. And now, as I usually leave, before I leave it off with uh, our CEO here, this is something that I do every year. And this is to remind you that what you've accomplished is phenomenal. But do not stop learning. Continue your education. We see many of our graduates become directors of radiology. We see many become COOs. Some have even gone on to become physicians. So do not stop learning. But please remember one thing. I tell the story every year that, as you remember, my brother, who was only three years younger than I am, he passed away four years ago. But he was crippled, never walked a day in his life. But that never stopped him. And that's where I got my passion, my energy to give back to healthcare workers. That's why we can use all the fancy words to take care of our customers and all that. These are still our patients. And once we remember that, we will give that extra compassion, that extra love to our patients. Always remember, it could be your mother, it could be your father, your grandparents on that table. Always give them everything you have. And please remember one thing. As long as I'm here, these doors of West Boca Medical Center will always be open to all of you in anything that you need from the staff here and myself. So again, to all your families that are out there and your friends, and specifically to all of you, congratulations on completing this journey. But it is only beginning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to have Mr. George Rizzuto, our CEO, come back up here and finish up with some words. This proved to be the best night of my month. I am just overwhelmed, and I'm so glad I'm here. And I, Jen, what a, whew. I've been to many commencements, and you know, you're special, and I think you captured, and I was watching the head shakes, and you're right about the mask, you can't tell the whole face, but there were smiles, and there was acknowledgement, uh, just fantastic, and your poor husband. <laughs> but my wife does that to me, too. Um, and uh, you know, I learned more just in your summary uh, about all of you, and I hope that you didn't think that I was so brief in recognizing Ray and Dr. P, but it was purposeful. Because we wanted to recognize you first, but now, if, Laura, I am so impressed with these two, and that's why I did come to some events, and then tonight you captured it all. I was right. They're intelligent, they're experienced, they're passionate, they're a great team, and they are selfless. They lived every day for you and for your future. Teachers make such an impact in your life. You guys are lucky to have these two. So if you could come up here. <laughs> and I will read this for Dr. Uh, Hersteiner first. 
In appreciation for your 17 years of dedicated service, devotion, and commitment to the students of the West Boca Medical School of Radiologic Technology, on behalf of a hospital administration 2020, as well as our Board of Governors, we want to recognize you with this. One thing in healthcare, you have to be you know, resilient, right? Um, and believe me, Ray and, and LB, this you know, it might just seem like a plaque, but it comes with a lot of heart. And everyone uh, really just wanted to recognize you uh, with this. And so Ray, my friend, my brother, uh, and someone who I've come to also respect, in appreciation for your 20 years of dedicated service, devotion, and commitment to the students of the West Boca Medical Center School of Radiologic Technology on behalf of hospital administration, 2020, and also with best wishes from the Board of Governors. Thank you very much, guys. Ladies and gentlemen and graduates, that concludes our celebration. Uh, but this just came to mind. I remember sitting in George's office and when we had to make decisions concerning the ceremony that we do every year, yeah, I took it to heart. I was a little disappointed that maybe we weren't going to have a graduation. But this gentleman said, we will make it happen. We will do something for these students. There's no way a class is going to go by without at least having some type of celebration. So I want to thank him again for making this happen for you because, therefore, you will always remember that it doesn't matter whether we had 350, 400 people in the audience. The most important ones, number one, are you and the family and friends that are watching live stream right now. So again, I want to thank George administration. And again, to all of you, congratulations. <laughs> and to all of you at home, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And always remember, West Boca Medical Center is the place to come to. Thank you. <laughs>